and welcome to the Mailbox Rogues Gallery. My name's Birch. My name's Sean. Hello. Hi, how you doing, mate? Not seen you in a little while. Yeah, long time no see. How's it going? Yeah, not bad. You've been away or something. You, you got a bit of a tan there. Oh, yeah, yeah. A bit, a bit tantastic, you could say. Yeah, well, of course, today's episode on the Mailbox Rogues Gallery, where we find a rogue throughout history and see if they can go into our amazing mailbox of rogues today's episode we're going to be talking about walt disney yeah. so i thought as a bit of research why not go to disney world in florida oh wow that explains the tan yeah oh okay brilliant how was it it was incredible i mean i know they say it's a small world after all there but the, the park is fucking massive <laughs> it's ridiculous so you went there just to do research for the show yeah just me okay you didn't you didn't have family or friends no 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 i was there uh, like for work purely research yeah i was like spent most of my time really just walking around with a, a pen and a pad oh okay but you know i didn't forget about you i brought him some nice uh souvenirs some nice gifts really yeah just bear with me a sec it's uh it's a bit big okay oh okay <coughs> what the fuck have you got there <coughs> oh. Oh. what, what you... the fuck is that? <laughs> that that's walt disney that's a block of ice. Look, look, look a bit. Just, hold on, let me just wipe it off a bit. <laughs> See his face? You know, Is that Walt Disney cryogenically frozen in a block of ice? Cryogenically frozen. I know a lot of people said, oh, it's just a myth that he was, he was uh, cremated. He wasn't frozen. I did a bit of snooping. I went into the famous Disney vaults and there he was, just like on a block of ice. You must have pulled out some scam to get into the Disney vault. Oh, it could almost take up an entire podcast, my uh, my plan and my scheming for that uh, couple of weeks. But Can I just check, did it just involve you dressing as Mickey Mouse and asking to be let in? Close, Minnie Mouse. I oh, yeah. seduced a couple of the guards ah. and found my way into the secret room and managed to get him back on the plane with me. Blimey. Did you have to buy a ticket or just chuck him in the luggage? No, I, I was able to declare him, actually, so it's uh, it worked out all right. Oh, great, yeah. He's looking a bit peaky. Is it not a bit warm? I can see a bit of meltwater coming off well, him, actually. That's the thing. I thought we can talk about him for a bit, and you can see it is melting, like yeah, you say. Yeah, it's definitely melting. He's, he's definitely melting. I'm thinking by the end of the episode, he might be able to have a few words to oh, say for shit. himself. <laughs> he's, you think he'll defrost in time? I reckon so. I mean, I've I've kept him out of out of my fridge freezer over last night. Uh, it was a much bigger block of ice before. I reckon at the rate he's kind of melting, I reckon he'll be able to have his faculties back. By he was the... in your freezer last night. Yeah, my fridge freezer. Yeah. Right. It does explain. There's a couple of frozen peas stuck to him. Oh, I wonder where oh, they yeah, went. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Do you want a pea? No, I'm all right, thanks. Okay. I like him frozen. It's kind of crunchy. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. I mean, this might ultimately kill him, defrosting him like this. I'm not sure cryogenically this is the best way to do things, but all for the name of podcasting, eh? Yeah, exactly, yeah. I mean, as long as it kind of benefits us at the end of the day, that's what really matters. Yeah, yeah I agree. I agree. One thing we can ask him, maybe, if he does defrost, did you ever hear about his mysterious final words? Yeah, I did. I did hear about that. I, I've, I'm quite curious about that myself, actually. I think that of all the questions that I have, like all the amazing things he did, the one thing I want to know about most is what did he mean by those those last words? So we both know, but just to fill the listener in, Walt Disney, just before he died, the last thing he ever wrote down were the words Kurt Russell. Yeah. As in the actor, Kurt Russell. Mm. Um, no one knows why. Least of all, Kurt Russell, <laughs> yeah. um, who at the time was a child actor. Well, that's the thing. I mean, you would assume if Walt Disney had died in the 80s, he was probably thinking about how great of a film Escape from New York or, or The Thing were. Mm. But at this point, he hadn't done any of those films with John Carpenter. So it, it makes it even more of a mystery, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, certainly um, Big Trouble in Little China. That mm. wasn't out yet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, what could he have possibly meant? That is really odd, though, isn't it? The fact that Kurt Russell doesn't know either. Well, I know Kurt Russell was in a Disney film around that time. Right, OK. Maybe he was writing a death threat to Kurt Russell. Maybe, yeah. I mean, we didn't get to... I mean, it was the last thing he wrote. Maybe he hadn't written the title of this bit of paper. Maybe he was writing, like, a, a list of kids I want to kill. We can only speculate. I... No, I'm sticking with that. No, I'm going yeah, with that. Yeah, right, I, yeah, that, yeah, that makes sense to me. Right, well, I mean, you know, I've always got your back. Without having thought about it much myself, I'll, have, I'll gladly parrot that for you. So I guess 
if that is the truth, which we're going to say it is, yeah, yeah, maybe it's best that we keep him away from Kurt Russell when he uh, when he has de- to frost him, when he yeah. defrosts, especially because he could be a zombie by the time he comes back. Oh, I did. I didn't think of that. Yeah. So you're putting all these ideas in my head now. I thought he was just gonna come out and sing "It's a Happy Happy World" or some shit like that. Yeah. Well, tell you what, because I can see the way it's melting. The block of ice mm. is from the top down, so he'll probably animate. You know, as it gets past his his head, but he'll still be frozen from the waist down. So if he's kind of like lurching about and going and reaching towards your head and saying the word brains, well, at least then we'll know before he gets free. Yeah, that's true. I'll push the block back about a foot. Yeah. Okay. Well, because I mean, just in case, I did like the idea that if I wanted to keep my drink cool, I could just chip a bit off him. Yeah. But yeah. now that you've mentioned the zombie thing, I think f- for the safety of all of us, I'll just move him. That's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. So if he was writing a list of kids that he wanted to kill, mm. who else do you think might have made that particular grade? Are there any child actors? I mean, child actors are terrible, aren't they? Yeah. Almost universally. So are there any child actors you'd like to kill? Child actors I'd like to kill. Um, I mean, that sounds like, that sounds very, that's very violent rhetoric there. Let's say rather than child actors you'd like to kill, let's just say child actors you wouldn't mind if they had been killed. That sounds a little bit yeah, less threatening, doesn't it? That's nicer, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Maybe, I'll, maybe I'll, try just... and, I'll try and whittle the list down a bit just for time constraints. Yeah. I mean, I've got one off the top of my head. Oh, go on. The kid who was in Home Alone 3 and 4. Yes. Because, I mean, one, trying to replace Macaulay Culkin is mm. career suicide anyway. But two, he was just fucking terrible and annoying. I don't know what they were thinking. All these sequels and reboots these days, just trying to get the same kind of pizzazz and spirit of the originals. Mm. But just without without Macaulay Culkin and, and his two hands on either side of his face screaming, it just, oh. it just doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd have him for the chop. All right, anyone else? Most of the kids in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Wait, which one? The Gene Wilder or the Johnny Depp one? The, the Gene Wilder one. Yeah. The good one. Yeah, because when you look at that film, maybe with the exception of Charlie, they were quite nasty kids when you think about it. They were greedy. They were selfish. You know, and Obsessed I, with television. Yeah, exactly. And if I'd had the chance to win that competition like they did back then, I would have been a bit more grateful. I'd le- I'd let me stop you there. I think you've become a little bit confused. I was talking about child actors, and then you've sort of conflated that with the story of the film. Well, you know what? I mean? a, a, a film, a documentary, I'm kind of lumping them in as the same thing. Right, okay. But you know they're different, don't you? What? What? Films and documentaries. Like, you know that Charlie and the Chocolate Factory... Is a documentary. ...is not a documentary. What? No, none, none of those kids were real in that film. What do you mean? I saw them. No, yeah. Um, this is... Oh, how do I unpack this? Okay, so it was... Uh, they were acting. They were acting. So they were pretending... There's another word for it. They were pretending that they were a kid called Mike TV and a kid called Veruca Assault. But actually, they were different children and they were just pretending... For the sake of the cameras. You mean like, you're kind of shattering my reality here, hang on, let me just right. kind of... You know your favourite TV show, Home and Away? Yeah, of course. Right, you know that that's not real. Yeah, I, I, I can, I can, I mean, I, there are aspects of it which I can kind of say, yeah, might might be embellished somewhat. Yeah, yeah, no, and just like some of it is quite relatable to you in yeah. your life as, as an Australian. Yeah. It's not real though, is it? It's like a story is being acted out in front of cameras for entertainment purposes. So it's it's a bit like that, Child in the Chocolate Factory. It's like that, except rather than being a, a TV programme, it's longer, it's a feature film, and uh, instead of Australians, it's children. Is this making sense? I'm trying. I really am. I can see, yeah, you are sweat on your brow yeah. there. Um, yeah, we might have to leave... I, I might have to look into this a bit more after the episode. Here. Right, OK, well... I threw a bit of a curveball at you there. I was asking you about child actors. Mm. I didn't really think that you would get so confused. So maybe we'd just leave that subject. Yeah. Get back to uh, Walt Disney, maybe? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, we kind of started off by talking about his death. Should we... Yeah, a bit of an odd uh, odd way for us to start. That was. Yeah, and his final words. Maybe we'll wheel it around and go back to his early years. Make it a bit more positive. Hmm, Yeah. Yeah, he was uh, born in the year of uh, 1901, grew up in uh, Chicago. He had quite a few siblings, but 
at an early age, the uh, the family moved to a place in Missouri. It was there that he kind of first developed an interest in, in drawing. Mm. Basically, there was this old retired neighborhood doctor who, who lived there. And what Walt would do at a young age would be he would uh, draw the, uh, the doctor in the nude. Sorry? What was that like? He, he would draw the doctor like in, in the nude. Which one of them was in the nude? Sorry? The doctor. The, the doctor, doctor would be. He, yeah. It, it wasn't anything sexual. It was... Life drawing. I call it bullying. He would kind of like go up to the old man who at this point was enjoying his twilight years and he'd kind of like pull his trousers down while he was outside picking up the morning paper. Yeah. And then he'd quickly get a pen and pad. Before the doctor can pull them up, he's already got a sketch. Well, he's very old, you know. He's, he's kind of there just kind of grabbing. And you know how difficult a belt can be sometimes. Yeah. Imagine doing that like when when you're an old guy and he's there trying to pull his trousers up. Quick as lightning, Walt yeah, Disney. Just, yeah, just... well, he developed a really quick style very quickly at an early age, just drawing this man's old buttocks while he was still scrabbling to pick him up. Pick up his buttocks. Pick up, yeah, well, <laughs> when you get that age, everything kind of drops a bit, doesn't it? So he was <laughs> so he was trying to like lift one buttocks up and then the other. It's hard to hold on to both of them at once, actually, because he's one hand pulling up the belt and then trying to get both buttocks in the other hand can be quite difficult. Yeah, you can maybe right. get one. Yeah, that's right. It was a real juggling act for the old man. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, it was around that time that he kind of... You know in school, those little animations you do like in, in the corner of your sketchbook? Like you'd draw a stick man and on a few pages and when you flicked the corner of the book, yeah, it would make him run. Yeah, it looks like he's moving, yeah. Like his first time animating would be drawing like this old man on several bits of paper. He got a style that was like really quick. He'd have like all these reams of animations of this this old guy trying to pull his trousers back up, trying to make sure nobody can see his steamboat willy. Yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> Do you think that's where he got the name from for his first animation? I have no doubt that that's where he first got the idea for steamboat willy. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because famously, that old guy's willy looked like a steamboat, including the steam. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I, I'll be honest, I did a bit of research as well. I didn't go as far as Disney World. I only went to Disneyland Paris uh, for my research. So, yeah. I don't know, sorry, yeah, I just, I couldn't quite find the time. You're a lot, I'll be honest, you're a bit more dedicated to your research than I am. That's very fair. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I'll be honest, I didn't know anything about um, him drawing Doctors in the Nude when he yeah. was a young man. Just the one Doctor. Oh, okay, yeah, just the one. But, you know, it, it worked well for him. Without that Doctor's ass, we wouldn't have Mickey Mouse, we wouldn't have Jungle Book, we wouldn't have any of it. Amazing. And so he was drawing a lot through school. He uh, used to be a cartoonist for the school newspaper, and he'd draw like, patriotic pictures um, about World War One because mm. that was happening during his, uh, his teenage years. He tried to enlist, didn't he? But he was a bit too young. Yeah, that, he tried to enlist and then kind of forged some documents so that he'd be able to get in and he joined the Red Cross as an ambulance driver. He didn't blackmail the doctor into uh, signing off on a medical. Well, when I was reading up on it and I saw that he forged his documents, now that you mention it, blackmailing the doctor seems a lot more plausible. So he'd like be saying to him, look, mate, you get me this job as an ambulance driver. No, no, no! I'm, I'm, I, I can't do that. I'm sorry. You're, you're, you're too not, young. You're too young. You're too young. You, you can't do that. You can't even drive. I don't know. You've, have you ever been behind the wheel of a car? No, I haven't. But I tell you what, I have been. I've been drawing your ass for the past ten years. And if you don't let me have this job, then everyone's going to see it. Your colleagues are going to laugh at your bony ass with the loose buttocks. <laughs> a real nasty piece of work. Yeah. This, this Walt Disney. Yeah. None of that really came through in his public persona. No, he lived. He lived two lives. He lived. Uh, he uh, was the happy, jolly old man of uh, Mickey Mouse and Disney World fame. And then, on the flip side of that, yeah, he, he was a dirty young crook who would blackmail old men with naked drawings. It, this is a revelation, honestly. Yeah. Well, anyway, he got in the the Red Cross. He was driving an ambulance around in the First World War, wasn't he? And it, this is true. He he would 
draw pictures on the side of the ambulance. Pictures of what? Not that old man's ass. <laughs> oh, can you imagine? <laughs> He's like, I'll give you this job. If you give me this job, I promise I won't <laughs> I won't show anyone the pictures. Yeah, that's fine. A week later, I didn't say I wouldn't draw new ones. Hey, look at <laughs> <laughs> Well, at this point, he can draw them from memory. That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> so many of them. He's, he, he's, he's left this old guy in Missouri. He's off driving an ambulance somewhere in Europe in the theatre of conflict. And <laughs> but it's, it, it's his way of bringing a little touch of America with him, bit of a slice of home, you know, something to make him feel like he's not so far. He's drawn this old man's ass. He's <laughs> <laughs> got the sirens going, so everyone looks over and notices <laughs> just this bloke's ass. <laughs> Real vindictive little shit. Uh... Walt Disney. I still think he was doing it because he was homesick. Yeah, that's one way to combat it. Mm. I mean, in many ways, that old man's ass was like a father to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He'd probably kind of lean against the side of the ambulance and just stroke the picture and think of home. <laughs> So down the line, he uh, established all the big characters, Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, Goofy, Pluto, all the characters we know and love today, mm. started making a load of short films. Got a lot of praise, both critically and with audiences. Won a lot of Academy Awards. He is actually still the person who has the most Academy Awards out of any other person. 22, isn't it? 22. How do you feel about that? Because you've got 21, and you're retiring this year, aren't you, from acting? Yeah, well, the reason for that was that I thought... They're a bit political sometimes, the mm. Oscars. They kind of say, oh, well, this person's earned one now, so we should probably give him one final one. So are you thinking you're going to get one of the next Academy Awards and that will tie you with Disney? Well... Your contribution to acting? That's right, yeah. If I announce that I'm retiring, which I'm planning on doing in, in the next couple of days... Sorry, did I just accidentally announce your retirement? Because I knew, I didn't realise that it wasn't public knowledge yet. This episode will be released a few days after we've recorded it. So it's fine. By that point, I'm sure I will have announced my retirement. Okay, yeah. And like I say, they'll see, well, he, he's going. We need we need to give him one last hurrah, one last Oscar. And then I will be tied with Walt Disney. 21 is a lot, by the way. Like, you've done very well for yourself. It's not 22, It's though, not 22, it? I know. I mean, don't forget as well, you can retire from acting. They give you the fucking Oscar. And then, hey-ho, five years down the line, come back as a director. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm, I was I was thinking more best boy. Come, best boy. Yeah, come back and win one of those best boy Oscars. Yeah, the Academy Award for best boy goes to. But are you still a boy? I mean, yeah, you're, Is you're there getting a... a bit old to be called a boy, aren't you? Best man. Well, no, that's something different. That's to do with a wedding. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's a bit like uh, it's a bit like boys to men almost, isn't it? Like that band. But I guess that the title encompasses. The aging process yeah. with them, so they were boys when they started, and now when they're touring, they are men. So maybe if they change the name to "Best Boy to Man," yeah, while not confusing it with that '90s R&B group, they could do a, a "Men to Boys" concept album about Benjamin Button. Yeah, well, I think he did win Best Man to Boy, didn't he, that year at the Oscars? I didn't really even realize that was a category. Yeah, well, they they thought, well, if we're going to have it any year. We'll have it this year. Yeah, yeah. And then they've probably retire that award. They only had it the one year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, back to Walt Disney. 22 Oscars is pretty good. It was very good, but it wasn't enough for him, the early acclaim and those early Oscars. He wanted to try something which hadn't been done before. Mm. And that was a feature-length colour cartoon. They called him mad. They said, you fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Chased him down the streets with pitchforks and burning torches. At the very idea of a feature-length cartoon. So they, they were probably looking for any excuse to chase him out. <laughs> they were all just sat down like at the local tavern. It's like, we need a reason to get him out of here, but we don't want to seem like assholes for kind of hating on him for being a bit different. And then one of them was like, he's uh, meant to be doing a feature-length cartoon. Grab the torches. We've got our excuse. <laughs> yeah. And so he spent a few years working on what would eventually be Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. What was it called again? Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. I like how you say the word dwarves. That's good. You add an extra syllable there between... Well, give the man his due. You need to really enunciate it because it was such an important film at yeah. the time. 
So elongate it as much as possible is what you're saying. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. <laughs> it's fun. That was 1938 that that was released. It was, yeah. Um, I'll confess, I've uh, not seen it in its entirety. You've never seen Snow White and the Seven Dwarves? Not in its entirety. Wow. Um, so what, what? what is it about? Well, um, there's this bloke... No, it's seven blokes, and they're little. They're dwarves. They're dwarves. Actually, yes, they are. They're living in the, the forest, and there's no women around. And I think they work in a mine, uh, but there's no women around, so they uh, create one. It's a kind of like golem. You know, in the way in Jewish folklore, you could build a, a dibuk, which is like a yeah, of out of mud and clay, yeah. and you curse it or imbue it with some spirit. So they, they create this kind of dibuk out of clay from the mine, but it's a lady dibuk, mm. and um, she's called Snow White. Oh, okay, right. That's interesting. So they, they, they build her out of the clay from the mine. Yeah. Why? why and, they, they... and then they sort of bring her to life through dwarf magic. Dwarf magic, right. And were they all male dwarves? Yeah, yeah. I, I think can... I mentioned that, didn't I? Because there were no women around. Yeah. That's why they built her. Yeah, I can kind of see where this film's going, I think. Well, it's not... I know we've talked about some of Disney's perversions, but I think at this point he was firmly aiming for a family market. So it wasn't as bad as you're thinking. Oh. It was still a bit backwards compared to our times because they basically got her there to do the housework. Ooh. Yeah, I I know. It It was a different time and attitudes were different back then. They basically created her just to do the cooking and cleaning because they were quite tired, especially that one Sleepy. You know, the dwarves all had different characteristics. Oh, right. Yeah, go on. Yeah, so th- what, there was... There so was seven of them, right? So there was... Sleepy. Sleepy. Uh, he was always quite tired. Mm. Sneezy. He was sneezing. Um, happy. He was the one on antidepressants. Right. Monstro. He was the one. He, he had rage issues. Right, okay. Of course, there was uh, the colonel. He mm. was the one who had the special recipe for the chicken. Wore that little white suit. There was... Uh... Stiffy, wasn't there? There was one called Stiffy who had like uh, erectile issues. Yeah, that was a kind of ironic nickname mm. they gave him. Like, like if you've got a short friend and you call him Lofty. Yeah. And uh, and Doc. He wasn't a doctor. Oh. I think uh, he was just a minor like the rest of them. But I think it was a bit of an homage to the old doctor who used to live in his neighbourhood who used to draw the buttocks off. Oh, right. It was like a little bit of a, a nod to him. I'm going to call this character Doc. And actually, you do get to see quite a lot of his buttocks throughout the film. Well, I, yeah, I mean, what I have seen of the film, I've not seen it since I was a kid, I seem to remember them walking along, mm. like, with their pickaxes, pickaxes yeah. and shovels and things, and they're yeah. going, hi-ho, hi-ho, it's off to work we go, and the camera's just there, and they all walk past, yeah. and he's at the end, yeah. and the camera stays there, and they're all gone, but you just see like his buttocks just rolling along the ground still as they keep walking on. Yeah, yeah. And the, the camera holds there for like about five minutes while they're still singing. Yeah. After the five minutes, it gets to the end of the buttocks, the actual cheeks, and then it just kind of scampers along. Yeah, he, he'd... <sighs> He'd exaggerated them, obviously, for comic effect, <laughs> yeah. for the purpose of the film. But yeah, it was quite a good gag, actually, the mm. bit with the buttocks. In fact, most scenes in the film, they do play a part. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because there's the bit at the end where... I'm going to skip over bits, because, you know, you, you have seen bits and bobs of it. But... Yeah, I, I might have even seen all of it, but it's been so long, to yeah. be honest. Well, it's just skipping over to sort of near the end. There's a bit where Snow White falls into a coma. She's They work her too hard. Oh, Um so she's just like lying there, and then this uh, prince comes along. Not prince from the eighties. Oh, I was going to say that would like, be not like artist formerly known as. That would be very prophetic if he had uh, thought of prince. And nobody could have predicted prince. No, that's one of the things that you can really say about him. But no, this is like a prince. Okay. In a kind of old-fashioned sense, and actually the comic set piece of the film, like the 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 most memorable, best, funniest bit. The prince lay, leans in to give Snow White a kiss because mm. he thinks it will wake her out of her coma for some... That's another sort of pervy thing that Disney shoehorned in there. Yeah. But as a joke, what the dwarves do is they get... <laughs> as a joke, what the dwarves do is they get... <laughs> as a joke, what the dwarves do is they get Doc's elongated buttocks and they just kind of 
push it in front of where Snow White's lips would be. Oh so yeah, I rem- yeah, because the they ki- they the have prince- that bit where they're kind of like putting the lipstick on on his ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. And then the prince leans in, gives it a big kiss, and then you know, then they kind of like throw their voices a bit, you know, use it a bit like a ventriloquist, and it's going, <laughs> oh my! But they're just moving the buttocks. Um, and then actually, that is enough to wake Snow White up. You know, everyone got what they wanted at the end of the film. Yeah, yeah, apart from the prince. But yeah, it still wasn't that family friendly, now that I think about it. Yeah. Well, it's something for all members of the family, I guess. In Bit, bit of like a bawdy humour for yeah, dad. Yeah, bit of blue. on the arse. Yeah, I think the mums used to quite fancy the colonel, because he was quite well turned out in his suit. You know, there was a lot of the kids used to laugh at Sleepy and Snowy and Sneezy and Snoopy. Stiffy not so much, maybe. That was for grandma. That was like the really bawdy stuff. Yeah. She After she's had a few sherries on Christmas Day, she'd be really laughing at that. So, yeah, something for everybody, something for everyone in the family. And it, it did well at the box office, so it, it must have been good for the whole And he family. got an Academy Award for that. He got an Oscar for that. He did. The amount of honorary Oscars he got mm. was, like, crazy. He got one which was specifically for creating Mickey Mouse. And actually, going back to Snow White, he they did give him... Eight Oscars. Mm. So they gave him like a normal size one and then they gave him seven little ones for the seven dwarves. I think that's quite cute. It is quite nice. But I mean, if if he was there with like some other nominees mm. and they kind of like had the Oscars out there, it's like one Oscar and then seven little ones. Do you think any of the other nominees were like, I might have this. This he, might be mine. Mm, no, then you. You get into there, you get into the room and they bring out seven little Oscars. But, oh, for fuck's sake. Well, we know who's got this then. Oh, just checking in on Disney there. I don't think he's defrosting as fast as you'd hope. You can see, can't you? The ice is still. It's just getting down to his head. Yeah, well, you can ice. kind of you can pat him on the head. You can feel his hair. Yeah, but he doesn't seem to. He's not gotten to the face yet. It seems to be kind of thinning around the outside of him. So we're eventually getting to the the gooey Walt Disney Center mm. of this uh, icy eclair. I'm just not sure we'll get him moving around before the end. We might have to force him, mightn't we? Well, we'll see, yeah. We've still got time. Might have to break the ice more ways than one. Well, yeah, so let's just, um, while he's still defrosting, we've still got more things to talk about, haven't we? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, not only was he a pioneer of the animated short, the animated feature length, and all these other wonderful live-action films that he made. Not only was he uh, kind of known for that, the thing that I'm sure he's probably most proud of is Disney World and Disneyland as well. These, like, great theme parks where he really wanted to take you to another place that felt like another reality. Yeah. Well, I mean, I only went to one in Paris, which is pretty damn good, but I don't think it's Disney World, Florida, is it, like where, like where you went? No, it's not too on many, the same scale. Too many French people, I found. That is I was the thing. Quite, I was quite surprised just how many French people there were in Disneyland Paris. Well, the thing about Disneyland Paris, and you could call this a design flaw, but they did build it slap bang in the middle of the city of Paris. Mm. You'd think city planning wise, they'd build it outside the city like they do an airport. Mm. But no, they put it right in the city centre. Like, you know, the Eiffel Tower's right there in the middle next to Main Street, USA. Yeah. Thematically, it doesn't quite make sense. Like the restaurants there are just normal French restaurants, except mm. they've slapped some Mickey ears in every corner of the room just to kind of... All the waiters have to wear big goofy ears. Oh, the French haters, they wait, they hate that. That's right, and when they go up to you to ask for your order, they have to go, a yuck, in a French accent. Yeah, and French waiters are a proud people. They They're a proud race, the, the French waiter. Yeah, they really resent being made fools of. But when they're wearing those goofy ears, how can you not? Well, that's it, yeah. So when he uh, built... Disney World, but with his own two hands, a lot of people seem to forget. Mm, yeah. Didn't have any labourers helping him, he kind of did it all himself. Well, he was a bit of a control freak, if we're being honest. Yeah, no, that's, I think one thing is kind of like apparent with a lot of what he has done in his life. I know so far in the episode, we've painted him to be quite a saint. We've not really mentioned, there are darker sides to him, I know we haven't really oh, yeah. mentioned anything disparaging about him, but he was a bit of a control freak. Yeah, well, I mean, we've all got our own little foibles at mm. the end of the day. And and that was just one of his. He wasn't the kind of person that would let other people build a theme park for him. No. He, he just wasn't that way inclined. No. So I, I can respect him for that. Yeah, no, I, I, I can. He had an artistic vision and, and he stuck with it. Mm. So I'm, I'm sure he built it with the intent of making it like the flambards of America. 
Isn't that quite a niche reference for people who live in the southwest of England, exactly where we're from? Oh, I'm sure everyone knows Flambards. Fl- you, know, you, know, you know Flambards, listener? Flambards? Flambards. The more you say the word Flambards, the less sense it seems to make. <laughs> and now now I can't even remember Flambards. Like, the moment you mentioned it, I knew exactly what you meant, but now I can't remember what it is. Oh, Flambards. You can stop, dear, stop saying it. Just tell me what it is. Dear viewer, Flambard is a heaven on earth. Nestled in the southwest of England, rain or shine, it'll have you feeling fine. Are you borrowing marketing slogans from other... Because you said heaven is a place on earth, didn't you? That was from the old Haven Holiday Caravan Park adverts. I didn't say that specifically, but that phrase would apply to uh, to flambards. Okay, so that was his vision. To build a Floridian Flambards. Yeah, fl- that was that was what was on the blueprints. Well, that was the original name for it, I believe. Yeah. Floridian Flambards. <laughs> <laughs> it's and... catchy. I don't know why he didn't stick with it. No, Disney it... World doesn't sound nearly as good. No, but some people said you're Walt Disney. You got Walt Disney Studios. Maybe keep it on brand. Yeah, and that was the one time when he let up a bit of the control. Like, all right, fine, we'll do it. We'll do it that way. And I don't think he should have. I think if the, the last people you want to relinquish control to is the marketeers. I'd be there every year if it was called the Floridian Flambards. Mm. You've already got me hooked by the name. If you buy like a season pass for our Flambards in this, in England, does that would that work for Disney World as well? If it doesn't, then it should. And so, yeah, as we know, it's now this huge attraction, one of the biggest holiday destinations on the planet. One fact about the place, you know the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean ride? I do, yeah. True fact, do you know that there is actually a real human skull in that ride? No. It's true. Where did that come from? Is that from one of the kids who died on the ride? Yeah. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Okay. Fair enough. He was, yeah. He was a uh, little uh, Timmy Proudfoot was his name. Oh. And oh no. he was the first person to uh, go on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. Yeah. And you know, Proudfoot by name, Proudfoot by nature, he he just wouldn't sit down on the ride. He kept on standing up because he wanted to see all the pirates. Yeah. You know how they are with like those animatronics, like swigging beer in the in the pub. And then one of them was like in a jail. Then you saw them like fighting on a pirate ship. And it's really exciting seeing that as a kid. And he was just stood up looking at all this amazing stuff going on. And uh, as hard as his parents tried, little Timmy Proudfoot just wouldn't let his proud feet down and and sit down. And the first time the boat goes on the the first slide down, essentially, that first Mm. dip, going down really, really fast, mind your head sign, just takes it clean off. Right. And his parents probably didn't realise until at least when they got off the ride, maybe even when they went home at the end of the holiday. Yeah, well, I mean, you know what it's like on on that ride. It's quite exciting, so your mind's on other things, and they kind of realise... Like, They're just enjoying it. Yeah. They just out of the corner of their eye see Timmy sit down. Yeah. Not realising that his hair doesn't come back with him. And there's a lot to see at Disney World, so you're not just constantly looking at each other and all that kind of stuff. So they were kind of like holding Timmy by the hands and like taking him to all the places. They took him to have breakfast with the Disney characters, oh. signed his little autograph book. Oh, he must have liked that. Yeah, well, he would have if he had a head. Yeah. They went on Thunder Mountain, they went to all the shows, and, and they, they had a really great time, but there's so much to do, and I can attest to this, there's so much to do at this park, you wouldn't notice that your your child lost his head. That's the theme park slogan. They've got that. I've seen that on the advertising campaigns. It says, there's so much to do, you won't notice if your child loses their head. And that's one of the songs as well in like one of the rides. Yeah. It's kind of really drummed into you there. Well, uh, I guess I, I, you'd think it'd be bad press, right? Park just opens. This is the first lot of people on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. You think that'd be bad press? Somebody hmm. loses their head, hmm. but actually, they brilliant as they are at marketing. They spun it. You know, they made it work for them. They said this kid lost his head. His parents didn't even notice until they got home, looked through the picture that they got on Thunder Mountain. Yeah. You know, when they go through the ride, goes past a camera, and yeah, then you yeah. walk out at the end and you see it, your face on the screen. They bought that, took it home didn't realise until they checked the key ring that they bought it on that Timmy didn't have a head. Hmm. And I think, you know, fair play to the marketers. They uh, they spun it 
they they really did uh it, it's a testament to the park it's a testament to them as a company and yeah as a tribute to little timmy proudfoot they just kept his head there just on that mind your head sign like a, as a reminder oh, what is stuck to the sign yeah well, well that's grim for the first few years you could actually see his face and his facial features but of course that ride's been there decades now mm. so so now it really is a skull still kind of indented into the sign though that's right yeah i mean he was facing the other way so you can see the front of it oh i see yeah 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 and it's a way for people to pay their respects to to me just as they're about to go down this exciting ride and you yeah. know they've not had any accidents like that since that is a very strong reminder for people to kind <laughs> oh, yeah. of sit down. Yeah. Did you, I mean, you saw it yourself when you went, did you? I, I did, yeah. And I mean, I can see where the kid was coming from because I was standing up looking at all the things. I was I was really loving it. It was just so wonderful and, and strange. So I was stood up in, in the seat crawling over all the people trying to look around. <laughs> yeah. And I knew that when it got to the mind your head sign and I, I saw Timmy's skull, I thought, no, no, I'll, I'll sit down. Yeah. I'll sit down now. And it, it's just a beautiful tribute, really, I think. And he did not die in vain if it saved your life and probably the lives of countless others. I, yeah. I mean, I'm alive. And I mean, what greater legacy could Timmy have had? I can't think of any. No, no, no. no. Nor can I. Really wonderful park. So Walt Disney wasn't defrosting fast enough, so we flipped a coin to see which one of us would basically have to warm him up a bit. So Birch has just been kind of licking the block of ice for the past quarter of an hour. God, it really sticks to your tongue, this. Yeah. I think we're almost there, though. Yeah, you know that's getting picked up on the mic, though. Right, well, I think he's... I think he's defrosted enough now, actually, because you've just sort of been licking his face, and he's, his face is kind of basically out of the ice now, isn't it? Is that a bit of movement in the jaw? Wait, one more look. Yeah, I guess he's all right now. I guess yeah, I can... Yeah, he's, he's waking up. I see something. I see something going on. Uh, uh, where, where am I? Uh, you're, you're in Exeter. Uh, ex uh, Exeter? Where, where is that? Is that near Main Street? Main Street, USA. Is that... So cold. Yeah, well, yeah, it's a bit. I'd offer to put a coat on you, but you're still kind of like encased in ice. Where, where year is it? 2018, Walt. 2018. What? Why have you brought me here? Um, Birch. Well, we we've brought you all this way. I I went to Disney. Great park, by the way. Really, really lovely park. Um, I've heard great things. It's lovely. We brought you all this way. We we. You're admired by so many people. We've got one burning question. There's like one thing that yeah. we want to know. We'll let you out of the ice, uh, then we, we, we promise. What does he want to know? G Kurt Russell. Yeah, why did you... Uh, what, what, what does that name mean to you? Yeah, why did you write Kurt Russell? Kurt, Kurt Russell? I, I don't know if I should uh, really say. Mate. I mean... Do you know how difficult it was bringing you back here? I had to have... Sex with two guards in the Disney vault, dressed as Minnie Mouse. You know, I'm scarred for life. I did that to bring you here, so... And quite frankly, we can just smash you to bits if you don't tell us. That's right, you're, you're part ice man at this point, so you would crack as well as the ice. Okay, well, uh, uh, to put it simply, and uh, this may be uh, detrimental to my legacy, three words. Kid kill list. I fucking knew it! It's a kid kill list, we oh knew it. We were trying to work out. That was the only reason that we could fathom that you but would you'd write have his... Kurt Russell's name on, on a list. Because by that point, like Big Trouble in Little China hadn't even come out yet. No, not nor Escape from New York. We were talking about this earlier. Uh, Big Trouble in Little China. Oh, mate, you'll love it. It's a fantastic film. He, he, fair play to the guy. He's come leaps and bounds since since the sixties. Since he was a little boy, made tons of great stuff. Well, you get me out of here. I, I I need to get back to my family. I need to get back to the, the Disney park. Well, hang on just a we're, minute. We're, we're in the middle of something here. We're doing a podcast. Yeah, you know I mean, you know podcasts, don't you? He probably doesn't. No? Didn't have them back then? Well, I mean, he can answer that, but I, 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 probably not. Doesn't look like he does. Well, he's throwing up on himself for now. <laughs> yeah, that's horrible. Um, <laughs> do you know what? Let's, should we, we don't really need him now for the rest of the episode, do we? Not really. We're I'll, kind of wrapping up. Yeah, I'll just, um, I'll, ju I'll just move him back here. Come on, Walt. Come on. Just move him to the back of the room. Yeah. Just sort of out of the earshot of the microphones. 
Yep, there he is. I still, mm, I can hear him moaning a bit, but right. Any, oh, shut up. <sighs> right. Anyway, uh, well, yeah, well, we got what we got our answer. We got what we wanted to know. Yes, yeah. that's, that's great. He, he was written on that as a kid kill list. Yeah, makes perfect sense to me. Well, thank you very much. I feel like um, you've provided the greatest contribution to this episode by going and fetching Walt Disney. Hmm. So thanks for that. No, that's, that's quite all right. Good to see that uh, my endeavours over there didn't go in vain. He looks a bit upset. Little bit, yeah. I mean, I guess a lot of his family are probably dead as well now, so that I don't want to be the one to break that to him. That's a bit of a downer. <sighs> maybe we should just refreeze him. Ugh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, he wanted to be frozen, so maybe that would be the best thing for him. Mm. Stop moaning. Jeez. Oh, it's annoying, isn't it? This guy, you think he's, he's been asleep for God knows how many years. You think he'd be a little bit more well rested. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, well, let's let's wrap this up and then we can chuck him back in your freezer. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, let's uh, let's get this rolling. Cool. So, um, thank you for listening to the Mailbox Rose Gallery. You can catch us on the internets in various ways. We're on Facebook, Twitter at Mailbox Rogues. You can email us. You can email us mailboxrogesgallery at gmail.com you can also find us on facebook mailbox rogues gallery i did that one already i said facebook you idiot sorry yeah uh, uh, you've ruined it and anyway um you can catch us on youtube on podbean and on itunes and please leave a review on itunes that really helps yep that helps a lot to get us more exposure so it would mean a lot to us you sounded quite sincere there I'm always sincere. That's true, Particularly yeah. with this podcast. Oh! Hang on. I've got a, got a text message. Yeah? It's a bit unprofessional, checking your text. When we're finishing up the episode. I know, but, you know, I never normally get text, so I can only assume it's important. Well, what is it? <sighs> Shit. What? Um. What? I, uh, don't know how to <laughs> put this, but I just got a text from the Disney Corporation. Yeah? Could that be a coincidence? It's a hell of a coincidence if it is. What does it say? You're looking quite worried. Well, they've, oh, they've got pictures of me when I was dressed as Minnie Mouse, seducing those guards. CCTV. Yeah. I mean, I'm not surprised by that, to be honest. That's embarrassing. Well, yeah, but I mean, presumably you knew that was well, going to be the case. Well, yeah, I knew that was a risk. Um, basically, it's a long text. They do go on a bit. They, they know that we have Walt in our possession, mm. and they've bought the podcast. They've bought the podcast? Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess they own Marvel. They own LucasArts. They recently bought Fox. I knew we shouldn't have floated ourselves on the stock market, though. I tried telling you. Oh, yeah, but I just wanted to get a big slice of the pie, you know? I, I don't want us to be obscure podcasters. I want us to hit the big leagues. Yeah, now that fucking zombie in a block of ice over there owns us. Oh, yeah, he does, doesn't he? And we're going to have to edit the fuck out of this episode. It can't go out like this. Oh, yeah, they're a bit funny with... I don't. We didn't. We didn't say anything libelous, did we? There was a lot of mention of buttocks. Yeah. Okay, well... I'll tell you what, also, we did mention the... <laughs> and also how he used to... <laughs> so that's going to have to get edited uh, out. Yeah, that's that's that in particular is not going to make the final cut, because I don't even know if many people know that. No. Okay, well... We're going to have to leave it at that. I think we've got a lot of editing and red tape to get through. Yeah, we better we better get to it. Okay, well, I would just say goodbye, wrapping up the last episode of the Mailbox Rose Gallery that isn't under the Disney Corporation banner. I've been Sean. I've been Birch. Goodbye. Ha ha! Somebody, somebody come get me. It's me, Walt Disney.
Oh, God. Oh, I feel sick. Oh, God. Oh, God. Why am I throwing up ice cubes? Oh, help. Mickey. Anyone. Please. Oh, God. Oh, God. 2018. Everything, everything I've ever loved has been gone for years. Everyone I've ever loved is lost. Help. Help me. Somebody, please. 911. Anyone. <laughs>